What's up, Neo family? It's Ray J back with another video. And this one I want to talk about what's going on with Neo, Tesla, Spy, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. I want to break down what's happening to the market right now and some very important things to be watching for and what's going on with the economic data coming out for tomorrow. I'm also going to be breaking down some other important pieces of data, which are going to be very important for Neo uh, coming out for tomorrow and what's happening with the charts for all these different stocks. But before I break anything down all this information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo, the link down below and deposit $100 into the account, you're guaranteed five free stocks plus a $100 cash reward. This offer ends in just about like two weeks. Don't forget to check it out before they run out. Anyways, let's break down what's going on with the market and NEO. So when it comes to NEO, NEO is down about 2.77% for the day. And the market overall made an attempt to balance. Spy didn't close quite green, came very close to, but Tesla ended up closing a little bit in the green. So the question is, what data is going to be coming out for tomorrow and how can all of this affect the markets? I just wanted to briefly talk about that. So for tomorrow, we have Bostic from the Fed giving a speech. We also have the Jolt's job openings reports 30 minutes after the market opens and the economic optimism report as well. And with all this data coming out 30 minutes after the market opens, it's going to be very telling as to how the market is going to end up moving. Now, this is all coming out for Tuesday, all right? But don't forget that when it comes to the way the market moves, uh, what else is going to affect us would be seasonality, in my opinion. When you look at the seasonality perspective of the markets, you will notice that we tend to see the market bounce a little bit as we hit the month of October. And that is what typically happens during this time. But then there tends to be one last sell-off during like the third week or so of October, before we start to see some very, very bullish price action for the month of November going into December. So it's very probable that November slash December are going to be bullish for the markets. It's very, very likely. But for the month of October, it's very probable that there could be, you know, this bounce coming temporarily before another move to like one more move to the downside. But it doesn't have to be like a new low. It could just be like a retest or just a small drop before we see more upside later on. And that seems very, very probable. So it's very important to note this. It's very important to get ready for this. And this is going to be very telling for how the market ends up moving. So with that said, uh, right now, I think the market's due for a nice balance that's coming. I think this could help NEO push to the upside very soon. We may see NEO drop a little bit more before the balance ends up coming. But then once we get to this like November slash December period, I think there's going to be more upside nonetheless. Now, to add on to this, I just want to note that when it comes to the overall seasonality and the sales of NEO, as of right now, the sales are not looking bad whatsoever. I would say that, um, you know, NEO is seeing a slight decline for September. That's what typically happens between September and October. But then November and December tend to be a lot stronger when it comes to monthly deliveries. And there was a slight decline, which is why NEO closed red today. But what's good about this is we had 55,000 for the quarter for the entire deliveries, which is a new record for NEO. NEO also announced that as of the 30th of September, they globally have 137 NEO houses, 304 NEO spaces, 303 NEO service centers, 1950 power swap stations, uh, 3200 power charger stations, and 18,000 power chargers in total, which is not bad whatsoever. To add on to this, NEO had about 38 million in volume, which is just a little bit below average, which is not bad. And there's not much shorting going on with it, nothing too crazy on the technical side of things. We tend to balance more on Tuesdays. We're green about 55% of the time. And we tend to see NEO do a little bit better as seasonality emerges. Now, with that said, what do I think is going to happen to NEO? Here's my answer. I think that NEO could drop a little bit more. We could be retesting this 8.5 area very close to this imbalance, 8.4 to 8.5. Then we're likely going to see some kind of balance and see NEO attempt to start pushing towards the $9 area. I'm going to break down exactly why that is by looking at SPY. I think SPY looks bullish in my opinion. There's only one word to describe it that's bullish because on the four hour time frame, it's quite evident that we have this cup and handle forming. And with this cup and handle, it's going to likely lead to more upside as time goes on. Now, that is some great news for many of the bulls out there. And I think that this could continue to lead to more upside. But for the, the temporary short term, we're going to be watching this 432 area to see if we can break that or not on SPY. My gut tells me it's likely going to break. Now, for Tesla, I had very mixed views of this. Uh, you know, we ended up missing on deliveries by a long shot, and typically that leads to downside for the stock. 
But this time around, okay, this time around, uh, we, we saw a quick drop before it's just attempted to recover. Now we have this inverse head and shoulders on the four hour time frame. Now we also have this head and shoulders that's forming on the four hour as well. So I'm going to be very open minded nonetheless about which way this thing ends up going. But because Tesla closed above 250, that's a sign of strength. So there's a very good chance that if this inverse head and shoulders is going to play out, it's going to lead Tesla to pushing towards this 257 to 258 area. If that ends up being the case, okay. Uh, this thing could continue pushing towards this 260 area, and that once again could remain more bullish. But going forward, and as time goes on, we're going to be watching this very carefully to see if Tesla can hold this level and break above 254. I'm leaning in the direction of it breaking 254 to push to very close to like 260. But just to be safe, we want to watch for confirmation and we want to be watching to see if that ends up being the case. To add on to this, when it comes to other you know technicals out there, if you look at Apple. Apple has a very, very nice potential inverse head and shoulders, kind of like a cup and handle forming. So I think there's a very good chance we're going to be watching Apple approach this 175 area, and I think it's very likely it's going to end up happening. If that's the case, this could help drag the market upwards as Apple's starting to show more strength. So I think 175 plus is coming, which is bullish for the markets. The QQQ looks bullish as we have a very, very nice looking cup and handle forming as well. I think that this is going to lead this thing to push towards this 365 area. If that ends up being the case, that could lead to more upside as well. And this is going to be likely dragged up by Apple and other tickers like that. So I think it's very probable we're going to see some upside. Uh, I'm leaning more in that direction for the NASDAQ and the QQQ. For NVIDIA, we also look bullish. So watch this thing potentially break 452. If that breaks, watch 455 plus on NVIDIA. If that's the case, that would be a pretty decent sign for it as well to get very close to this 460 area. And once again, that would be some great news to witness. Very, very awesome to see. So I'm really hoping that we see more upside. It looks like that's more probable for NVIDIA, if anything. So anyways, guys, that's what the charts are looking like so far. Uh, for NEO, I could see a little bit more downside before we get this temporary bounce. So it is looking a little weak on the four-hour time frame. I could see NEO get very close towards this imbalance down here, 8.4 to 8.5, then try to bounce and start pushing back up to $9. I also believe that NEO could be establishing a cup and handle like formation. So this could be like a cup and the handle is just barely forming as Neo establishes a higher low before this thing gets ready to bounce and start pushing for much higher levels. All right. So don't forget about seasonality. We tend to see Neo, uh, we tend to see Neo basically in the market basically bounce in the very beginning of October, slow down a bit during the third week, then continue pumping for November slash December. I find that very probable and I think that that's what's going to happen from this point on. All right, guys, so thank you for listening. I think Neo may have a little downside coming in 8.5, rate test to 8.4 before it bounces, and then we should see it push back to $9 plus and start pumping to the upside with the market, in my opinion. All right, so thank you for listening. Have a great day, guys. Neo in the market to the moon because the long term is very bright, and peace out.